Fortune Four. Fortune Four. Welcome, Wrestle Randers, to Wrestle Rand Edition number 37. I am your host, the Internet Champion, Long Island Dice. No, wait, no, wrong show. This is Wrestle Rant, and I am your host, Bleacher Report feature, comms level 2, Graham GSM Matthews here today on Tuesday, March 6th, to discuss everything going on in the world of wrestling, including last night's enjoyable edition, as in my opinion, of Monday Night Raw, as we quickly progress towards WrestleMania 28 in only less than a month. I cannot wait, I don't know about you, it's going to be one of the biggest events in WWE history in recent Years and now I am super excited for this as well as this episode of Wrestle Rant. So let's get right down to it. So last night on Monday Night Raw, I will not go in order. I'll just go in random order. But for one thing, Rock John Cena last night reached its climax after all of. Okay, maybe it didn't reach its climax, but it did take another step in this boiling rivalry between these two icons in WWE history. Um, Rock delivered a couple of vignettes about, I don't know, the Boston history and then relating to Cena. I found some of them enjoy enjoyable. They were pretty fun promos. They were pretty fun video packages. The crowd got into it. They slowly died down towards, like, maybe this uh, the third one. But, I mean, I think they were still enjoyable for the most part. No harm done. Um, however, the promo that ended the show, John Cena and The Rock, not as good as, la as it was last week, but it was a strong segment nonetheless. Those guys have excellent chemistry on the mic. The Rock seemed a little bit better on the mic this week as opposed to last week. He really, you know, he got his edge in this week as opposed to last week, as I just said, because he was more of a comedian character last week and he wasn't this week. So I enjoyed that aspect of it. And John Cena, I mean, I have to go. As much as I don't like John Cena, I do respect him, but as much as I don't like him, I have to say that he is winning the war between him and The Rock in recent weeks. Because we said before, The Rock was dominating this feud. The Rock was dominating Ever since he came back, he was just dominating John Cena um, since Valentine's Day 2011. He delivered rock bottom after rock bottom to John Cena and delivered rock bottom. And his promos to John Cena just burying Cena. So it's about time Cena finally got an edge and has the crowd behind him. Especially since yesterday it was in his hometown. His hometown doesn't always cheer for him. So I did like that, that it's finally getting 50-50. Is it going to be like that at WrestleMania? I highly, highly doubt it. But, you know, it's worth a shot. So I did like that promo. We also had a tag team match. Chris Jericho and the World Heavyweight Champion Daniel Bryan team, best in the world as I would like to call them, defeated the team of the WWE Champion CM Punk and the 2012 Royal Rumble winner Sheamus. This is a solid match. I love this. Four great workers with great chemistry. Jericho and Sheamus have never touched each other before. Oh, God, that sounds wrong. But uh, they've never... Let's say they've competed against each other. They've never competed against each other before the Royal Rumble. And having them in the ring together for the second time in the last three months was an excellent idea. These guys ripped it up. Great way to hype both feuds, the world title feud and the WWE feud for WrestleMania, as well as tying in the feud with Jericho and Sheamus and Brian and Punk in recent weeks. So I love it. Great match. And the right people went over here with Chris Jericho picking up the victory and getting more momentum towards WrestleMania that he didn't have before, before the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. So I love that match. Hopefully hopefully we see more of that, and hopefully we see uh, Jericho and Sheamus lock it up before WrestleMania. Uh, first time ever match right there. Um, to kick off the show, we had Shawn Michaels return to Raw. I'm just a sexy boy. Return to Monday Night Raw to confront Triple H. Uh, and I'm sorry for my sexy boy impersonation. You can see that in my... Uh, in my YouTube video, so I think one dance video is enough for the sexy boy of Shawn Michaels. But anyway, this segment was very, very strong. I love this. Shawn Michaels is always a treat when he comes back to Monday Night Raw. I don't care if he comes back every single week till the day he dies. Okay, maybe that might be a little more excessive, but still, I'm going to love it either way. These guys had great chemistry on the mic, much like Rock and Cena did. These guys, to kick off the show, I love the announcement of Shawn Michaels as a special guest referee at WrestleMania inside the Hell in a Cell. Now, we didn't know, we didn't know this was coming. I mean, I, I'm, I should say that we did see this coming, but, I mean, it was still a shocker to me. My heart skipped a beat when I heard uh, that Shawn Michaels is going to be a special guest referee. This is a, this is a stipulation that I wanted last year to make it special, with Shawn Michaels being the referee. However, it didn't turn out to be, and they didn't go that direction. They just went with Noel Bard. 
but this should make the, the match like the most storytelling match on the card otherwise uh, besides Rock and Cena. I'm really looking forward to Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and Undertaker WrestleMania, especially with the hook of Shawn Michaels saying that he knows who's going to win. It's just, and that he will be right again. It's just up to him as the referee to decide the winner come WrestleMania 28 in Miami. Um, now for the Lester storylines on the show, we had Santino become the new United States champion. The match itself between him and Jack Swagger, overbooked. We've seen this numerous times before. Didn't care for the match whatsoever. Uh, I just don't care for Santino Morella. I mean, he gets an excellent reaction. He gets a huge pop. He's like the underdog of the WWE. He is funny. I will give him that as well. I love his YouTube show. I just, I don't know. I just don't like him all that much. And I don't really like him as United States champion. He doesn't need a championship. He's just comic relief. He doesn't need a title. But that's just my two cents. As, le as long as you get the title off Jack Swagger, who fit the belt perfectly. I mean, I'm sorry. He fit the belt perfectly, but he was never on television. And when he was, he lost. So that never really did anything for him whatsoever as U.S. champion. He wasn't getting over in the first place. So I guess putting the belt on Santino Morella going to WrestleMania is... Somewhat of a good idea, I guess. Whatever. I could really care less. I just kind of sighed when I saw Santino win the U.S. title. But I'm not thrashing on him. He is a good wrestler, so hopefully, let's see, he can bring on some good matches, maybe with uh, Dolph Ziggler or something like that down the line. Um, we had Eve defeat Alicia Fox in like a 30-second match. Those two are a little bit capable more of. Uh, I'm sorry, capable of what we saw more of what we saw on Monday Night Raw, but obviously they're not going to get enough time for it. It's WWE creative we're talking about here. They're not going to give them more than a minute match on Monday Night Raw. Are you kidding me? So yeah, and then Zack Ryder returned after that, after Eve won the match. He said that she was just a hosty and all that good stuff. And then after the match, I'm sorry, uh, after we came back from commercial break, Eve kissed Zack Ryder on the lips. Now, that was very well done. I do like this angle between Zack Ryder and Eve. I do think it's intriguing. Uh, I don't know where this is going to lead next, but they do need to find somewhere to incorporate the feud into WrestleMania. I was thinking a mixed tag team match with Eve and Miz or even whoever heel, whatever. And then uh, Ryder and Kelly come WrestleMania, so you incorporate the Divas and the storyline at the same time. But, you know, chanting Hosky around the arena has become a frequent thing. Describing my ex-girlfriend, no, um, nonetheless. But, you know, I love the uh, I love the reaction the fans get into this angle. But, you know, I am loving this feud with Zack Ryder and Eve. I'm not, I shouldn't say feud, but more of an angle between these two. Now, Randy Orton and Kane also starting up a random feud on Friday Night SmackDown last week, also incorporating the last night's Monday Night Raw episode. Now, I like this feud. I do. I really do. Because last summer, I was hoping this feud would come to fruition because he's, you know, how Kane is insane. And then you have Randy Orton who supposedly hears voices in his head. So I do like this feud. These guys can work well together. I'm not I don't really care for the match all that much. They did have a match on SmackDown, I mean what in two thousand ten or something like that. Oh no, I'm sorry. They had a match last year in two thousand eleven. Uh interesting fact, fun fact for you. Uh Kane wrestled Randy Orton in his last match on WWE television before he was taken off television by Mark Henry on July twenty second, two thousand and twelve. I'm not I'm sorry, two thousand eleven. I don't remember the exact date. But it was something along those lines. So I found that pretty interesting. Maybe that's why he's uh, targeting Randy Orton recently. Because I'm not too sure. But, I mean, it's whatever for Randy Orton. He was a huge star on, as World Heavyweight Champion. And now just putting him in this throwaway random view without reasoning is just going to do nothing for him. So hopefully that works out the best as well. Um, what else do we have in the show? We have The Miz lose again. <sighs> whatever. I, I don't even know. I don't know how you treat the guy who main evented WrestleMania 27. Like complete shit, and then have him lose to the big show in like 10 seconds. I mean, it's, we're talking about the big show here, so I understand that. But The Miz, a former WWE champion, main event at WrestleMania 27, became unified tag team champion in the United States, Mr. Money in the Bank, and WWE champion all within one year in 2010. 2011 was his downfall, and he hasn't recovered since. He hasn't won a match in three months, for God's sakes. So hopefully he can recover and get a match at Mania. As I said before, maybe aligning with Eve, but. We'll see. So I think this was a decent episode of Monday Night Raw. Not great. I think it was good. Very promo heavy. A lot of progression towards WrestleMania. We have six matches on the card, I believe, now. And if you add in the uh, the, uh, the GM feud with Lauren Itis and Long. Teddy Long didn't really do anything as Raw general manager, by the way. Besides like the first five minutes of the show when he was with uh, Santino and that. I think besides that, uh, Teddy Long didn't do anything as GM besides 
uh, winning the accolade of becoming the only man in history to be the GM of SmackDown, ECW, and Raw. Fun fact for you, hashtag fun fact, so go tweet that to your followers. So yeah, a uh, good episode of Raw. Hopefully they can bring up the ratings. I I don't know. The ratings last year were so strong, and they're lackluster this year. I'm, I don't like that. I don't like to see that. My heart just my heart just skips to be every single time I see the Raw rating drop uh, even less because I mean even more because I don't know. It, it means that they're not going to put any more effort into the shows in in coming weeks. Remains to be seen, but hopefully that can show in the ratings in coming weeks. Um, just other things, just some random topics. Money in the Bank pulled from WrestleMania officially because of Wade Barrett's injury. He's going to be out three to four months. Apparently he was supposed to win it, therefore they're not having it. Very dumb idea on my part, I think. Um, on WWE's part, I should say. Should really have that match regardless. Um, the Brian Kendrick in a story that I reported this past Sunday morning it might be returning to WWE to take part in the WWE Cruiserweight show on the new WWE Network come this fall, so I'm looking forward to that. If that rumor is indeed true, bring back Paul London, one of the greatest tag teams in the last five years. And Brodus Clay also has not been seen in weeks as well, a little over a month actually. Uh, I think Vince McMahon is down on his in-ring skills, but I can't see that because I think he's one of the best big men in the company today, and I think he's very agile, so I don't know why they're just treating him like this. Hopefully he can come back as a monster or back as a babyface. Whatever the case, hopefully they can recover from that and they can have Brodus back on television very soon. So as for a question that um, Jacob asked me from at Jacobian Wisdom, I'm sorry, Jacobian underscore Wisdom, he asked me, is WWE allowing Cena and Rock to show on, I'm sorry, shoot on each other? Um, I don't know if they're allowing each other to shoot on each other. I'm not too sure. I think they're just... WWE, before the shows and before their promos and whatnot, they just go, hey, Cena, Rock, just go say whatever the hell you want out there. They don't give him any scripts besides Rock's, you know, little notes on his arm and whatnot. Am I wearing notes? No. Just to prove to you, I'm not wearing notes on my arm today for the show, and neither on this arm either. So just to, just to let you know, just to uh, pre-warn you that I'm not cheating on my lines today, so, so I'm not pulling a Rocky on you guys. But yeah, I think they're just telling them just to go do whatever the hell you want. Just go say whatever you want. Shooting on each other. I love it. It's making for great promos. So I don't know if they're doing this on purpose. There is legit heat. There is legit heat between these two. So whatever they're saying, I'm, I bet there is truth to it behind the scenes. So yes, now time for my shameless plugs. Um, before I get started with my plugs, make sure you guys go check out the YouTube show, Weekly Wrestling Talk Show. I was... Uh, ask to check that show out. Very good stuff. Great analysis of everything wrestling. I will shoot you guys down the link in the description box below, so go check that out. Great show. Um, also, go following at WWE Dashing. She wanted me to plug you guys, so go follow them on, on uh, Twitter and go follow them. You know, great tweeter, very entertaining tweets. It's so now time for my plugs. My dance videos, I will be publishing one once every week. So if you guys like that kind of stuff, go check it out. If you don't, don't watch them, whatever. But I do appreciate all the feedback you guys give me on my dance videos. I love it. I've been in an excellent mood lately, so I've been publishing all this shit on YouTube. Like, I just don't even give a shit. So I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. Um, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, of course, if you want to see any future videos. We're nearing 50 subscribers, so I'm really happy about that. Um, make sure to check me out on Bleach Report. I am debuting a new column entitled GSM's History Behind the Past where I incorporate my fun facts and bleach reports, so go check that out, as well as the return of WWE Push to Punish. Um, that comes, the return comes, edition number 11 comes this Saturday, so go check that out. Um, check out my website for all the WWE TNA rumors, recaps, and more at nextdoorwrestling.weebly.com, as well as the newest edition of Spoilers. Ben Gartland won't be available this Thursday with me at 6.30 Eastern Time, but my friend John is going to be covering it for him, so go check that out. But I am excited to announce that we will be having WWE Tough Enough runner-up Luke Robinson on the show. One of our biggest guests to date after last week's Adelita's Way appearance. I hope you guys will love that and check that out. March 22nd, mark it on your calendars. It's going to be an excellent show. So that about does it for Wrestle Rant, I'm sorry, Wrestle Rant edition number 37. And I am your host, Graham GSM Matthews. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as I said, subscribe. You can't like or leave a comment. I've disabled all that stuff to avoid any... Uh, rising above the hate and all that good stuff. So make sure you guys follow me on Twitter, most importantly, as well, at save underscore us underscore GSM. And I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome week and enjoy everything wrestling as we quickly progress towards WrestleMania 28. So as I said before, have an awesome week. And this is GSM signing out. Until then, guys.